Hi everybody. Today I have updates for you. The first thing is just a little bug fix and the second thing is a big thing. And this is so great that I still half don't believe that I got that done. But first let's see the little bug fix. And this is in the plugin from the last video where we had this um, some channel and um, the compressor new so you could choose the compressors. And in this plot view, we had a little graphics glitch if you changed the order. So the compressor went to another place, the gain reduction meter didn't go to the other place. So I fixed that, that is done. So you can have fun with that. But that just was a minor little bug. So last time we had compressors, this time we have equalizers. And I don't know if you observed that, but recently there was this video popping up by this nice man standing behind this plugin who claims to have exposed the plug-in scam. And YouTube recommended this to me, so um, I watched it because the title was The Plug-in Scam Exposed and me making plugins wanted to know what he has to say. And well, basically he tells us that all equalizers can be set up to sound the same and he's proving that with some doubtful tests. So I thought, yes, maybe it's again time for equalizers. Because you know me from the big plug-in industry who wants to scam all the users, always buying my new plugin. And this is why today you get the plugin for half the price. And now before we go to the big thing that I announced, let's just see a bit about equalizer plugins and how they not sound the same. So in the video, he's talking primarily about filters so that you could set up a filter with a filter gain and a frequency and a bandwidth or a Q factor and you could reproduce that filter with every other equalizer plugin at least with equalizer plugins that have these parameters and the same range to get there and you know what basically that is not wrong but let's see one thing about filter implementation so we go to the rear EQ we all like and this is how a regular filter looks like so we have the center frequency and we have the bandwidth and of course the gain offset. And this bell shape is on the same on the left and on the right side from the center frequency. But now if I go and move the frequency to a higher pitch, you see that the filter on the left side stays as it is while the shape on the right side changes. It changes because it needs to get zero at the frequency that is half your sample rate, the so-called Nyquist frequency. And this behavior is a behavior that we call filter cramping. So here we see a cramping filter. And don't worry, there's nothing wrong with it. You can use this equalizer as long as it sounds good. Don't worry about cramping filters. But now if we go to the orange EQ from Tukan Studios <laughs> and we have this bell shape as we just saw before and now I move my frequency knob up you see that this filter doesn't cramp so now we already have the first topic where equalizers are simply not the same is about filter cramping if we have equalizers with cramping filters they will be different from equalizers with not cramping filters. In the orange EQ you can also choose to cramp the filters as we can see here. Now if I move the frequency we see cramps like hell and this equalizer uses a special method for having the Nyquist frequency so high that the filters don't cramp and this is a method called oversampling. Oversampling just doubles the internal sample rate of the plugin but that also means all the audio has to be calculated twice so that costs a bit of CPU. If you want it to have light CPU usage you can switch off the oversampling but you will switch off the decramping of the filters. And while talking about the rear EQ and the orange EQ well maybe they can sound the same but they are different equalizer plugins. The plugin industry is not necessarily scamming you because you can have different features in the plugins. For example, the orange EQ can be linked together over different tracks. It has another visual user interface. And to me, the usability of this plugin is much better than the rear EQ. But that's of course a question of taste. 
but that also has an influence on your sound. Because if you have a plugin that you really like to use and that helps you dialing in the correct values, can let you produce a better sound than a plugin that is hard to control. Maybe you could set them up the same, but during a creative mixing progress, you won't set them up the same. Okay, let's go on to point three, and this is about non-linearities. So when it comes to plugins, like the um, EQT2 Khan, which simulates a tube equalizer, you not only get the sound from the filters, but also from the tube emulation. Or if you use, we had that before, the sum channel, and you bypass the gate and you bypass the compressor, you can count that as an equalizer, which emulates the equalizer of analog mixing consoles. And of course, they do have their sound signature in the signal processing of the unit. So that's why we had this different desks here. While no desk would be clean with no special sound signature, go back to desk two. And now let's send a test tone. And this plugin is still deactivated, so don't worry. And here we have an analyzer and we can see that we have one very small spike at the frequency that the tone generator is generating. So now enabling this plugin gives us a bunch of overtones that we can see here. And this pattern is a sound signature. Go to this plugin again and switch the desk. And we can see we have different sound signature. Well, and that's not all because again, tone generator, we go with minus 10. So we have our peak here at minus 10. And the first overtone is, well, 65. This is about 55 lower. Now, if I go and give it zero dB, we're picking with the first overtone at 45 lower. So you see that the overtone pattern here changes depending on the input level. And that's not even all because we're just sending a sinus wave in there and looking at some measurements. But typically we're dealing with complex material and all that stuff has a big influence on the non-linearities. So yes, this would be an equalizer with non-linearities and this would have another sound character. Even though the filters could be reproduced, the behavior of the plugin is different. So having different equalizer plugins doesn't necessarily mean that you can do all the same sound with all plugins because there's simply more to them than just the filters and even the filters can cramp or not cramp. And while again talking about cramping filters, there's another method for decramping filters. You don't have to oversample. There are different filter implementations and there's a way that produces decramped filters without oversampling. And this particular plugin, some channel series two, uses these other filters. Leonard Facchinetti made a great stream about that some while ago, where he showed all the things about cramping filters, decramping filters, how to decramp filters and all that stuff. Okay, enough of talking about equalizer plug-in scam. Let's get to the big thing. The big new update is in the Orange EQ Series 2. And that's basically the standard digital equalizer in my plugin set. And this is simply a high quality equalizer, even with decramped filters, we had that before. And of course we could test and measure this here if everything's all right. So. If we turn this up here, we should see the same thing in the measurement. For all who are not familiar with this plugin, it's not by me. This is the EQ Curve Analyzer from Bertum, and it can measure the frequency response. And here we can see everything's all right, everything's fine, is as it should be. So now why an update? When it's doing what it should do, what would be the need for an update? And this is about the equalizer phase. So we can measure the phase here as well. And I don't want to talk too long. If you don't know about the signal phase, you should read something about this, maybe in some expert books. You can watch videos about this on YouTube, but I bet there are so many people telling you things on YouTube with half knowledge that you'd end up more confused than knowing things. If you want me to do more educational videos about phase of equalizers and all that stuff, well, let me know in the comments. Back to the topic. What we can see is if we have a filter, it changes the phase, which we see here in this purplish line. 
and the more we boost or cut, the more the phase changes. And don't worry, that's still completely normal. So let's reset that and let's use the re-EQ again and see when I now cut, it does the same thing. And now we eventually go and see the big new feature. And this is accessible from the menu where you can change this equalizer to the linear phase iceberg EQ. Well, iceberg is just a little joke, linear phase EQ, but it will represent itself as a kind of iceberg. And as we can see, this linear phase equalizer does the same phasing stuff as the regular orange equalizer. I hope you're confused now. No, we'll come to that in a minute. That's because of a setting. And this is the live monitoring latency. We have a precision mode which causes latency. But when we're not in playback mode for the project, we often have the channels in monitoring mode for record or just in stop mode. So we don't want the latency in this case. And this is why I set this up by default to only do linear phase equalizing with latency in playback mode. But we can switch that to precision mode even in the live monitoring situations. And now we can see we have no phase change here. And no matter what we dial in here, you see that we don't have phase change. Let's change that back. In preview mode, we see we're having these phase changes while when it runs in the real linear phase mode, we don't have phase changes. Using a linear phase EQ not only produces latency, it also costs a lot of CPU. And there are other reasons like the so-called pre-ringing effect that might you want to use the regular orange EQ, but there still are a lot of cases where you need a linear phase equalizer, especially while mastering, but there are other cases too. So well, now here it is in the orange EQ, the mode linear phase iceberg EQ. So well, what should I say? I hope you like the new feature. I hope you don't think it's a scam. Leave me a comment. Leave me a like if you like. Leave me a comment if you like. Leave me a comment if you don't like. Leave me a comment if you think it's a scam. But the most important part, as always, have fun with the plugins and bye bye.